Welcome to this fast and short introduction to my master class uh, that I <coughs> pretend to put online together with you who would like to sign up the 1st of May from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. six hours in a row and uh, first and foremost before I go into details I'll thank uh, two people especially uh, Peter Winder from Sigma Logistics and uh, Keith Swenson from APM Terminals, who was the two guys who actually figured out that I was a 35 years anniversary just around the corner and they uh, challenged me to set up uh, this online training. Um, I was easy to convince because I actually thought about that myself, but you know, from time to time you need to push to take the lead, and that is actually what we did. So uh, first and foremost, I started up my company in 1986, April 1st. So, 35 years, 20,000 participants later is what I learned from that, is what I would give across here to you here doing this uh, masterclass. We call it the wisdom for life, and the reason why I do that is because all the leaders, very successful leaders I have met, all of them lived a very happy life. So these two things are connected and you must uh, also understand that when you always take the lead uh, from whatever you come across or maybe even take the lead to create a change, then you actually live your life the way that you want to do it. So there's nothing that comes uh, and hit you in the back because you always take it up front. And this is what I call take the lead. But to take the lead, and uh, there are three different layers. I mean, at one conscious level, uh, the personal level, next conscious level is what I call the team level, and the, the highest level is what I call the business level. So this program that I'll try, all the knowledge I'll try to reveal, reveal to you is three ascending levels of consciousness in leadership. All this I call the elite practice of leadership, and I also have a special name for that that I designed, it, uh, designed, designed many years ago called e-leadership. The elite practice of leadership. So first and foremost, this is about wisdom for life. A little piece, a piece of music that we heard here just before we started uh, is from Beethoven. It's called uh, Ora de Freude, a triumph to life and to joy. So here we are. That is what we are doing. First and foremost, uh, the purpose here is presenting a genuine leadership knowledge from 35 years of experience and gained from 20,000 uh, participants now, 35 years later. The goal for this is unshakable qualities of leadership actually exist. That means that we can actually act in a way that we call it unshakable. Uh, the, the elite practice of leadership is the proof. That means there are some of you out there who are so good at what you are doing that you never fail. You always do the right thing at the right time, at the right place. That is outstanding. And I know for sure that many of you have done that already. But uh, I made a concept out of that. So, but I'll come back to that. The definition, and this, by the way, is also the definition of my what I call a uh, leadership. So the elite practice of leadership is a leadership. With that said, I would also like to uh, say a few things up here that is definitely a part of my knowledge that I gained over the uh, 35 years old. First of all, <coughs> the means, the principles and practices of your personal strength and your professional strength. I split that up because people they mix it up, uh, and especially HR is not uh, good at splitting that. Because when we talk about leadership, we primarily talk about this up here. That means that your personal strength is much stronger than this down here. Yes, you need this down here as well, and if you don't have it, you need people around you, attract people around you that actually like have that as a uh, speciality. I call them experts in this. So you need professional strength, competences, skills, outcomes, results, and expertise. Many people
people had to believe that taking an MBA, they would have actually accepted this. But the point is, <clears throat> many of them actually don't start their own companies because they are lacking this up here. And if you should choose between this or this, and uh, make a talent program, you better choose this, because this is much stronger than this down here. When you look at people like Trivia, Steve Jobs, one of the latest ones that's coming, coming up is uh, uh, the Tesla guy, uh, Elon Musk, who is really extraordinary at this up here. And if you look at him and listen to him, his brain works so fast that he literally can't uh, express himself the way that he thinks. His <laughs> thinking ability goes much faster than his ability to speak. Very interesting attitude. He says that our MBA, uh, <clears throat> we don't like that, that's actually not true. We need that, whatever you like or not. Engineer, yes, we need that. When you listen to Elon Musk, from time to time, I have to get a doubt if this guy can have an education. But the point is, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and all the other guys who you have heard and followed over the years, they make themselves proud of being, uh, what I call, a dropout from the business schools. That's true. That's because this up here was much stronger for them than this down here. So let's go into details with this. Your personal strength, this is called your personal, I mean something that your character trait, the strength of that, that you always take the lead, you always the one who makes the speech, you always the one who say we do this and this and this and we start now and so on, that is a personal strength. Some people have that, you don't need to be extrovert to do this, I have met people who didn't say a word, who actually did the same thing. Uh, when you ask them, uh, can you please do this and this for me, uh, they tell you follow, follow. I knew about that you would ask, so I did that actually uh, last week. This is what I call, <coughs> you can easily be into it, no problem, and still take the lead and be very strong up here. Intelligence, let me hear, it has nothing to do with IQ. Let me just make this 100% clear. When I talk about leadership intelligences, I look at you as a raw diamond when you are young. A brilliant, when you grow, uh, uh, grow old, a brilliant, you know, the wife, your wife probably have a brilliant your little ring, brilliant here sitting on the ring. This has 56 facets. Like your intelligence, I guarantee you have 56 facets as well. And different kinds of intelligence that can speed up and down, take on and down, turn on and down. That is what I call intelligences. Your capacity is actually one of them. The capacity, what does that mean? That means that you can overcome much more than many other people are able to do. You can work long hours. You already, a long time ago, figured out that if you work 80 hours a week, then you actually overcome at least 12 months once of people only work 40 hours. And how much capacity do you actually have? Here comes the big discussion about sleeping, the need for sleep and all this. I call this, it has nothing with that to do, it is your capability to get something done that you really are aiming at. And here, everything is limitless, even the people who say they need to sleep 8 hours every night on each side, uh, preferred. If, if they get what they really like to do and get an opportunity to do that, you will see something amazing happens to them. They actually turn up their capacity. This is an intelligence to be able to do that. So this intelligence, you are actually able to take your energy level up and down and overcome as much as you like to do. Sleeping doesn't matter. Uh, two hours uh, for some of you might be enough, but that's a different story. Your skills, uh, what kind of skills do you have? Are you one of them who can see things other people don't see? Are you the one uh, that we call a good listener? Are you the one who can stand up and say and tell your people uh, when you make a town hall speech? A town hall speech is something where you give people information and right after you stop, after 20 minutes, they go out and do exactly what you want them to do. That is definitely a skill that you have. You can turn that up and down. Most people have turned it down and say, I can't make a speech. 
I can't make the right speech. No, that's a different story. All of this radiates from your personality. People they pick it up just like this and say, oh, there's something with this young man or woman, or what is that? She has all the right things. Down here, we talk about professional strengths, as I said before, being an engineer, being an MBA, being a, sign, <coughs> a scientist or whatever, computer scientist, is a strength, a professional strength. Competences, things that you have learned, and let me say one thing about this learning. It's not what you learn on the MBA. It's not what you learn at the university being a scientist. It's not what you learn here there, down in engineering university. It is what did you learn from learning about that and how can you actually do this? This is this down here. The best of them who actually start off doing something, uh, there's so many things that comes up in there. Uh, artificial intelligence, the Tesla car is definitely also one. It's built up on this. There's some people in there who actually know how to do things because they are learning and they do it. They don't just talk about how bright they are. They go out and show they are how bright they are. That's a competence. And the skills as well. Yes, you will learn math, you will learn physics, you will learn all the other things, IT and so what. <coughs> that is a skill. And the and and the expertise that you have is that you're actually able to take that up and do it faster and better and better and faster and faster and better and better. And then you hit this level here that I call the expertise. Results, I usually talk about outcomes, but what kind of results have you actually accomplished in the past? And based on this, I can evaluate how good you actually are on this. And if you are good at leading people, I can also evaluate this. This is something, and if you should choose for a young man or a young woman being a talent, this is the way to do it. This year they can always learn, but that was only level number one. The framework of my speech goes around this. Remind me of that. So this is personal, this is professional. I put that up here. Because the framework is that you are able to scale that up on team level and on organization level. That means that we, when I turn the pages, we saw this strength of personality, strength of profession. I do the same thing on teams. Build teams of greatness. When you've done that, then professional, profound, specialized. So for what purpose would you use that team? Ladies and gentlemen, you tell me you have a team, I say, Yo, no, you don't. It's very rare to meet a company where teams actually work like teams in, as I see them. They are, because you have a group of 10 people, 10 individuals, they did, they're definitely not a team. I have a task here in the autumn where I have to go to Hong Kong and talk to a company out there that I've done it extremely well over the years, being in Drybog, Pacific Basin. I should sit together with the administration guys, including the CFO and all his people, and make a team out of that. First and foremost, we need a team goal. Otherwise, we'll not be able to do it. But what's a team goal for administration and uh, finance? and all the other groups that you have in your, in, in, in your company. Make sure a team and a group is not the same. A team is a group where you have taken all the individuals' interests up and lift them up to what I call the team goal and go forward with that. And then we go in and discuss, okay, finance. What is the speciality? The profound speciality in finance, in research, in planning, in operation, and so on. You mentioned. But it has to be specialized, and the reason why I say that is because they should know to the deepest detail what it takes to move this forward. So this is teams, building up teams. Remark, it's the same thing, strengths of, of personality, build teams of greatness, strengths of, of, uh, of uh, 
professional, and he talked about specialized professional teams. Then we scale it up one more time on the third level. I call this organization, build an organization of elite teams. That means that you are now sitting at the top or wherever you're sitting, in one of these being a team leader here. Now we talk about an organization that is consist of elite teams all over the place. The interesting thing about that is that we have to make it as flat as possible, otherwise it doesn't work. You can't have, uh, you can't have five, six, ten layers before you hit the bottom of the organization. That will never work. I'll show you a way how to do this. Um, build an organization of elite teams and make them work. What we're aiming at here is one thing, that is build an, an organization, a company that's ending up being an outlier. That means an outlier means everything is second to none, and there's a long distance down to number two, and we literally face no competition. We built an organization of elite teams, and we are in a situation where we trust our opponents, and we do that up front. I call this a business, <laughs> a business specialization around a strategy that I call grow fast or die slow. This is still the same thing. We lift it up on the third level of consciousness to make sure that we are able to do this. A strategy is something that is absolutely designed. We keep it in darkness until the day where we reveal the strategy and it goes like a thunderbolt on a clear sky. That is the strategy and that is I'll show you how to do this. This is something I have learned. It's not something I have invented. This is something I have learned from all the people I've been together with. And the only thing I can say is thank you very much to all of you. All the people that you sent to me have a little uh, share in this. Maybe even yourself, I guarantee. This was the first introduction. You can sign up on my website. There is a masterclass you can go in. We only accept uh, special invitations, so it's not each and everyone who can sign up for this. First and foremost, I have to be a part of the training in the past. So we know it's all the people who show up here. We expect to be something around 2025. So uh, I definitely look forward. Sign up. And then let's take it from there. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Say hello uh, to your spouse from me. And um, see you again the 1st of May.